Alright guys, next on our list is Cool Line, which is this little bar right here. And I'm going to go ahead and open that up by typing slash Cool Line. And it's not going to bring up a configuration window per se, it's just going to allow me to interact with this piece right here. Whoops, it timed out. Okay, what we want to do is go ahead and unlock that, and now I'm able to interact with that just by right clicking. Whereas when it's locked, it's completely uninteractable. Which is pretty nice because you don't want to accidentally click on it or anything, but basically what this does is it gives you a visual on your cooldowns. It'll start out over here and as it gets closer to the zero marker then it's going to get a little bit bigger and kind of pop up and you'll be able to kind of notice that a cooldown is ready. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that. Um, let's see if I have a short cooldown. For the sake of this video I'll use wild mushrooms and wild mushroom detonate. And you'll see it starts out at the 10 second marker because the cooldown is 10 seconds and it's going to get faster as the time gets shorter and then it gets bigger. Love it. Um, it's really cool for keeping track of your cooldowns. Um, I also use another add-on for this and I'm going to get into that in a minute. But lots of customization as well here. Um, you're going to be able to change the color of the bar, the texture of the bar, and kind of just change how it looks to your liking. Um, this is the way I have it set up. This is the way I like it to look. Um, as far as my settings, I use Frizz Quadrata on just about any of my add-ons. Um, you'll see that on LUI here at the top panel as well. Pretty much on anything you see that I I have edited, I'm going to go to Fizz Quadrata. I like it because <coughs> it's a very normal text, I, could, I guess you could say. Um, it keeps things very simple and easy to read, and I like that. Uh, for border, I have Blizzard Tooltip. And for the background color, I have white. Uh, you're going to have to go into more to get my texture, and I have Renatera Minion. I'm guessing that's how you pronounce that, not 100% sure. Actually, I want to go ahead and see how this looks. I like the fade on that. So we'll go ahead and keep that. I don't know why, but for most of my add-ons, I have the smelly texture. I do like that texture. Like, for instance, on my uh, X-Pearl, my health bar and my mana bar are smelly texture. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. Let's see what is next. Data Store isn't even an add-on to my knowledge. I'm pretty sure it's just a plug-in for DBM or something that I forgot to turn off. And speaking of DBM, um, the next one on the list is DXE. Um, it's a lesser known somewhat version, I guess you could say. DXE is a boss mod, just like DBM is, um, but it's slightly different. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up by typing slash DXE config. Um, I'm not going to be able to show you a whole lot besides test bars and um, movable parts without actually being in a raid encounter because that's the way I have it set up. Um, whenever I enter an encounter with a boss, it's going to show the pain. Uh, let's see that. Let's go ahead and open that up here. Um, what this is, is this is basically your main hub to do everything. If you hit Windows, you're going to be able to open the radar, the version check, the proximity, the alternate power, all of these windows. You're going to be able to open them up and you're going to be able to move them. This is where this is going to show up. Um, I can go ahead and, let's say, shift click. No. Yeah, shift click on the title bar. That's what got me screwed up. So you can go ahead and shift click on the title bar to move these um, and then you'll just be able to close them when they're done by clicking on the X. That's how you move the windows. Um, this piece right here, shift click as well, you'll be able to move that wherever you want and then just hit lock when you're done. 
Um, basically what this is, is it has a timer for how long the encounter has lasted, and this is going to be your default um, health bar for your boss. Or boss is, it'll go downwards. So let's go ahead and show you guys some of the differences. So I'm going to pull up the encounters. I'm going to load Dragon Soul. And let's pull up what I have for Altraxian. Say, well basically it's going to have a drop down here. And this drop down is going to include every mechanic that that boss has. Now say I want to pay special attention to Fading Light. Um, fading Light on self is what it's... What, what is it going to do when Fading Light is on you? Basically, I have a sound alert. You can change these by going into... Let's see if I can find this real quick. Sound labels? Yeah, and you can kind of listen to these. Um, you can... I guess these are going to be your presets that you can bind different sounds to. You can kind of listen to the different sounds in here. Um, there's a lot of cool sounds in here, actually, to choose from. So you can kind of customize it a little bit. Let's go back to Encounters. And then you can put your preset here. And you'll be able to pick the sound. Um, let's see what else. You'll be able to add a flash. Um, we're going to do a little dummy flash real quick. Actually, I'm not going to do a flash at all because we have a purple main color. And this is what this is going to look like whenever I get fading light on me. It's also going to do a timer right here. This is where I chose to put it. Um, and what else did it do? I also have it set up to uh, work as alongside um, mixed scrolling battle text. So that's what that was. These are all options that you can edit yourself. I'm going to try to find that for you so you guys can kind of look at this yourself and be able to change them. Alright, everything's in here for you guys to mess around with, basically. Um, you're going to be able to change the way that it is output, your warning messages like you just saw come down the middle. Um, as far as bars go, that's the um, timer you got. The timer are going to be the warning bars, I believe, is right here and you're going to be able to edit these in this window right here. That's about it for DXE. Um, like I said, it's just a personal preference. Um, by no means is it necessarily better than DBM. Um, I just prefer it. I enjoy using it and I like it set up, so that's why I use it. And actually we have one more thing to do with DXE. I need to hide that again for encounters only. There we go. Awesome. Alright, what's next on the list? Eclipse Bar Plus. Now, Eclipse Bar Plus is this right here. It's very Boomkin specific. Um, all it's for is showing you your standing in Lunar and Solar. And um, actually... X-Pearl comes built in with this bar. The reason that I downloaded it separately is because to have all of this as condensed as I have it, I wanted to be able to scale this as an individual add-on. I wanted to make it smaller. And let's see if I can go ahead and open that configuration for you guys right now. Let's see, what was the exact name of that again? Clips Bar Plus. Let's try EBP. There we go. So you'll be able to change the scaling. Um, you'll be able to unlock it, lock it the same as the other add-ons I've shown. Kind of move it wherever you want. It doesn't even have to be part of your unit frames. You can put it anywhere on the screen. That's just where I like it. Um, it's actually a very simple add-on. And honestly, it's just a little bit cooler looking version of the uh, standard issue Eclipse Bar. I'm not going to actually show that to you guys because if you play a Boomkin, then you know what an Eclipse Bar looks like, and this is nothing more than a suited up version of that. Souped up, maybe the word I'm looking for. Alright, Healbot is next on the list. 
for LUI it has a cool feature where you can kind of do frames and um, put specific add-ons in those frames and this button right here will toggle those. So by hitting this, you're going to go ahead and be able to see my heal bot. Um, right off the bat, you'll notice that my health bar is white. That's because it's monitoring if I have buffs on or not. If I hit that, I get Mark of the Wild because I have it set up to do that. Um, pretty cool add-on. The reason that I use it is because I really don't like to have my raid frames on the left side of my screen. I like to have them somewhere towards the middle. As you can tell, I'm like that with pretty much anything important on my UI. I like to keep it right dead center so I can kind of focus in on everything that I need to be looking at at the same time. And I'm not going to go through all the options of Healbot. You kind of have to just mess around with it, and there are tutorials just for Healbot. It's one of the more complicated add-ons that I have, I would say. A lot of people say it's very simple to set up, and eh, if you've been in and around add-ons for a while, it kind of is. But for anybody who's not too into this thing, this type of thing, um, it definitely takes some playing around with. The basics, I would say, are that it has click basically built in and what click does and what this aspect of healbot does is it allows you to bind spells it allows you to um, do so with several button choices this is your left click on your mouse the right click on your mouse and the middle button of your mouse and if you have extra buttons on your mouse you can use these right here to bind different actions so say I want to do thorns whenever I control left click. I would type in thorns here and I would go ahead and hit control left click on my bar here and I cast a thorns on myself. Simple as that really. Um, buffs same thing pretty much you just hit monitor for missing buffs and then it'll have all of your buffs in a nice little drop down here and you can pick which ones you want it to monitor for and you can check or you can put a little bubble next to what you want to uh, monitor it for. If you want to monitor it for your raid, say your nobody in your raid has that buff, then all of their all of their health bars will turn white. You'll be able to just click that, and you'll get Mark of the Wild on them. Pretty cool. Um, other than that, just some advanced settings and tweaking. Uh, there's nothing really else to get into on that. That gives you a pretty much overview of that. Um, I can kind of give you guys a showing of what it looks like if, say, I were in an actual 10-man raid. Got it going upwards. The power bars or the mana bars, all of that, you actually have to turn on yourself um, through the skins tab. You'll go to bars, and all you're going to have to do is, if you want that feature turned on, you're going to... Let's see, where is this? Power bar size. You're going to want to go ahead and turn power bar size up, and it'll show. Um, at default it's at zero I believe and that's why I mentioned that some people like that I like that hold on one second I'm gonna turn my test bars off being forgetful today it'll give it a second alright we're gonna go ahead and go into my next add-on which is LUI um, I know some of you have been waiting for this one now, LUI is basically an all-in-one user interface add-on, and I don't use all of its features, as you can tell. I do like some of my own. Um, basically, you're going to open that up by clicking up here, um, left-clicking. If you right-click, that'll open your option panel, but left-clicking will bring up LUI. First off, you're going to notice that we have modules here. It has its own module for just about everything has its own unit frames, um, or as, as you can see it's kind of moved from the blizzard default, um, it has its own nameplates, it has its own merchant module which will automatically sell stuff and repair and all that good stuff. Like I said, the reason that I chose the ones I did is because the ones that I turned off I felt like I had a better add-on. <laughs> or I just don't use it. Like, I don't use a Vengeance add-on at all, actually. Or a Swing Timer add-on. I really don't like Swing Timer add-ons. I find them to be um, 
clunky and not sexy and not sleek at all, and they're just kind of there and ugly, hideous add-ons that need not exist. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some features of it. Um, I guess I want to start out by showing you guys that there are different themes. So you're gonna be able to flip through these, and there's rogue. And rogue is yellow, and druid is orange, and there's all these different colors. Absinthe. That one's pretty cool. Let's see, blood prints. Just a bunch of different color themes that you can mess with. This one here, I actually made myself. I consider myself to be a minimalist, so I really like things to just be cut and dry, black and white, simple. Um, so that's kind of what I did with this. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, to be honest, LUI looks something like this out of box, per se. As soon as you download this, it's going to have an option right in the middle of your screen to hit install. You're going to hit install and right after it reloads UI, you're going to pretty much get this. The only differences are all of your modules are going to be turned on and the theme itself is going to match your class, um, like I've shown you. Um, some other cool things about it is basically that you have this nice little side bar that you can open up and that's going to have a condensed area where you can put 12 buttons and kind of slide to tuck that away. I really like that over the default Blizzard UI because it definitely kind of saves space, A, and B, on the default Blizzard UI when people are putting bars on the side it really bugs me, it looks really clunky, it looks really terrible in my personal opinion. I love this feature because you don't sacrifice button space um, and you still have that, but it looks a lot nicer and a lot cleaner. Awesome. You also notice that it has basically a lot of add-ons that already exist built in, like Titan Panel. This is basically a knockoff of Titan Panel. Um, it'll show my gold, my bag space, my durability on my armor, it'll show my frame rates and how much usage I have on add-ons. This is all out-of-box content. I didn't have to download anything extra for this. Shows me how many members are on in my guild. I can look who exactly they are in any of their notes, any of that stuff. I can look at my friends and I can change my broadcast, um, add friends by right clicking. It's very intuitive. I like it a lot. Um, I can't see myself going back to not having it. There are alternatives, but this is my favorite. It's, it's uh, said to be the only next generation uh, UI. Um, and I kind of, I feel like it lives up to its title fully. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. And also, guys, if you have any questions about these that you feel like I didn't cover, go ahead and put them in the comments below, and I'll either put a reply video up or I will just post an answer for you. Mana Core is this right here. Uh, a lot of people don't know about it. Basically, all it is is it's well, Mana Core itself is its own add-on company, I believe, and they make paid add-ons, which I don't specifically condone you getting because um, I, I don't think they fully match up with the terms of use, but they're not hacks or anything like that. They're just well-made add-ons, I, sh I should say. They're very well-made add-ons. And Tycoon is the only one that I've ever actually gotten from them, but basically what Tycoon is, I'm going to have to go to the auction house to show this to you. But basically what it is, is it automates a lot of things that you would have to figure out yourself and kind of just makes your life easier, which is basically what any good add-on does. Um, this one is specifically related to the economy of your server. It works in coordination with um, auction add-ons such as Auctionator and Auctioneer. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and I'm going to go ahead and run a scan. Tycoon does everything that it does based off of the data that you scan off of the auction house using these add-ons. So we're going to go ahead and do this quick scan. And I'm going to show you some of the really cool features of Tycoon.
Alright. We are gonna open this up. I'm gonna go have a seat first. Alright. We're gonna open up Tycoon. And first off, I'm gonna show you the auctions tab. Let's say I hit OK, I'm ready after it gives me the woe down on what's going on. Basically, it's gonna show me um, the current price of items. It's going to show me how much they usually go for and how much I can make of a profit off of that item by selling it at its average price and buying it at its current price. Let's see. The only thing that's... Hold on one second. trying to figure out my own add-ons. It's been a while since I've actually used this. I've been really lazy with the economy. I used to work the uh, auction house all the time. This this is pretty good at making you money. Um, I haven't gotten to play around with it as much as I've wanted to in the past month or so, but I can definitely say that there are add-ons for free that do all of this. Um, it's not quite as nice, it's not quite as neat, and it's not quite as easy. You're going to actually have to do some of your own math. Um, so this is a very nice alternative to that if you're looking down this road. But basically that, that explains the auction tab for the most part. I'm not exactly sure what the ordering is on why this is top and other things are bottom because this isn't the highest profit. I'm pretty sure there's a way to change that. That's what I was trying to figure out, but I'm not able to figure that out right now. It's not as easy as just clicking on that like I thought it might be, but... Hmm. I don't know. Not going to spend a whole lot of time here. A lot of people um, aren't interested in this add-on for the future or currently. Um, there's also a e explanatory video on their actual website, which you can just look up Manicore in your Google search box and it'll bring this up. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the actual the actual features that I use the most, which are really cool. Um, gathering specifically and farming. It's gonna show you how much gold you can make per hour on estimate. It's gonna show you the trend and the competition. Forget exactly how these two work, but basically I'm pretty sure that your trend is how much this item has been being bought lately. And the competition is how much it's been being farmed lately or put on the auction house lately. This will show you the current price per unit, how many it expects or estimates that you can pick per hour or gather per hour, I guess you could say. And if you go above this, you'll make more than this. If you go below this, you'll make less than this. And um, that's using the current auction house price that we just scanned. After you want to do one of these, you're going to hit click on it, and then you're just going to hit go. You're going to want to go to Fellwood, and as soon as the, you get there, there's going to be a route line right on your mini map, and you're going to just follow the route line and pick to your heart's content, make tons of money. Really cool. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and go into our next add on Mask. Basically, what Mask is, is if any of you remember what Button Facade was, this is the updated version of that. I'm going to go ahead and open that by typing slash mask into my chat box. And you can see it brings us to this nice little interface here. Um, you can get it to work alongside Bartender as well. Um, I believe you can do that with a lot of unit, fra unit frame add-ons as well. There's separate plugins for that. So that um, if you use the Aura frames on, say, Xperl or something, you'd be able to change the way they appear. These are kind of skins, that's basically what mask is for. It creates skins for your action bar buttons or your aura buttons. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of them. Let's see what else we have. So you can kind of just see how they look different, how you can kind of have which ones you think look best, and Definitely not an important add-on to have by any means, but I think it's pretty cool. I think it adds to the overall cleanliness of your UI if you pick the right ones. That's basically the only reason I have it, I would say. Now I have to remember which one I started out with you guys. 
I do like dark scale. But that's not the one I'm looking for. I think we're getting awfully close. I think it's Sidium. There we go. Yeah, it's a little bit darker on the edges there. Um, small, pretty clean and compact. I like it a lot. Let's see what the next one is. Merchant Pro. Merchant Pro is going to be the last one that I'm going to cover in this part. Um, and then I'm going to give you guys a little break and you can meet me back in part 4. Um, for this add-on, I'm going to go ahead and take you to a vendor. That's all it is, is a vendor automation. What it does is it's just like the one that's built into LUI, except it has some minor differences. I honestly don't remember what the minor differences are. You'd have to check and see for yourself. Um, but for what, one reason or another, I decided that Merchant Pro was better than the one built into LUI, and so this is the one that I use. <coughs> it's not going to repair me. I'm already at 100%, but as soon as I open this, it would automatically repair me. wouldn't have to do that. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and move Atlas Loot from over top of it. Yeah, I kind of just put it over top of that because this is the only way that I know to get to this add-on. And I wanted to keep it on my mini-map. But there was no reason to show it all of the time, so I hide it under Atlas Loot. In fact, there's no reason to open it at all after you set it up once. And um, obviously I just had to for the sake of this video to kind of show you guys. Um, you're going to be able to make your own restock list per character. I have Maple Seeds. I actually don't need those anymore because I got the uh, Glyph for that. So I'm going to go ahead and check that off. It's going to sell all of your gray items um, out of box. You can hit sell other if you want to add things to the list. And then you're going to drag and drop the items that you want it to sell here. And it will automatically sell those items when you go to a vendor. It will automatically repair if you have that checked. And it will automatically use the guild bank money first to repair if you have that checked. So this kind of just automizes your experience at vendors. Um, something that's really good about it as well is if you're one of those people that forget to uh, forget to repair, this way if you talk to vendors at all, it's going to do it for you and you're not going to have to remember to do it. So it's just another one of those add-ons that makes your life easier, um, but by no means is it particularly important, I will say. Alright guys, that about wraps it up. Um, we are almost all the way through, I believe. We're going to start out with mixed scrolling battle text, and in the next part we should finish off here at x Pearl, and then we're done. So if you see anything that you would like to tune in for, meet me back here in part 4, and uh, see you then.